right, let's look at these four problems, which are similar, but they're also a little bit tricky. And so you're just going to have to trust the method here. So the, the, the key with this one is you're dividing. Remember uh, doing these problems when you didn't have radicals on the bottom? You're basically trying to divide everything by the highest degree of the bottom. Remember that. So in order to do that, I have to put x squared inside this radical in order to get it inside there, right? Well, the square root of x squared is really just x. So on the top, I'm dividing by x, and on the bottom, I'm dividing by the equivalent of x, which is the square root of x squared. And I'm doing that for all of these. Actually, for these ones, I'm dividing by, I'm dividing by the square root of x to the fourth. I'm sorry, no, the square root of x squared, still square root of x squared, which is the same as x, so I'm really only dividing by 1x on the top, and I'm really just dividing by 1x on the top here but I'm dividing by x squared to the bottom. Okay, so that's the first step for all of these. When I do that, I get the limit as x goes to negative infinity of, if I divide everything by x, I'll have 2 plus 1 over x divided by the square root of 1 minus 1 over x. The trick to this, and so you might, you might want to just say, oh yeah, perfect, these go to 0, right? And my answer is 2 over 1, which is 2. But what you have to consider is the signs. You have to do some sign analysis before you do that. At the very beginning, you think to yourself, if I plugged in the negative infinity into here and here, what would the, what would the sign of the top be? Negative. It'd be a negative. Mm -hmm. And what would the sign on the bottom be? Positive. It'd be a positive. So my answer really is going to be a negative 2. It's really going to be negative 2. So you have to do some sign analysis because of the square root there. Okay, same with this one here. When I do that, I'll get the same thing, the limit as x goes to, now I'm going to positive infinity. And when I do this, I get, again, 2 plus 1 over x all over square root of 1 minus 1 over x. All of those things go to 0, 0, 0. And then what I'm left with is 2 over 1. But let's do the sign analysis. If I plug in positive infinity here, it's going to be a positive over a positive, so my answer is just positive 2. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. This last one's, last two are kind of a little bit trickier, actually kind of easier, but it's the same kind of thing. You have to consider the sign analysis. So let's do that trick again. If I divide by x on the top, I'm going to get negative 2x plus 1, and on the bottom, I'm going to get the square root of 2 minus 3 over x squared. Follow? Mm hmm and if I plug in infinity here, that will become zero. I'm sorry, negative infinity. And this, what's a negative infinity times a negative two? Positive. It's gonna be a positive number divided by the square root of two, so positive infinity. which is just a positive infinity. But don't you have to do the sign analysis on that one? I did the sign analysis in, oh, I'm sorry, yes. You have to do the sign analysis on this. So. Um, if you plugged in a negative infinity here, what does negative infinity squared? Positive. It becomes positive. Times negative, negative. But that's times a negative, right? So that actually worked out fine. And we know this always has to be positive on the bottom because you can't so think. It's negative infinity. So, oh, oh yeah. No, yeah. no, you're right. You're right. It's so I did it wrong. Sorry. So this is. Negative. So the top is going to stay negative. That's right. It's going to be stay negative. Very good. Thank you. You have to do the sign analysis. Exactly. Course, yeah. Then this bottom one, same deal. It's going to be negative 2x plus 1 all over root 2 minus 3 over x squared. That goes to 0. But doing the sign analysis on this one. That would be it. And so this one, again, this if I plug in a positive infinity squared, and this is always going to be positive on the bottom, this is going to be positive here and a negative there. So it's going to be negative over root 2 or whatever, negative infinity over root 2, which is negative infinity. So both of those were actually negative infinity, and that's how you do those problems.